we finally have a big follow-up study on menstruation and the impact of vaccination on menstruation. That's what we're going to be discussing in today's video. My name is Dr. Mikola Rasek of Merogenomics, but before we get started, I want to remind you we have another COVID Q&A event coming up. It's basically when you can join the event and bring questions you might have about COVID and we have a group discussion. If you want to find out how you can join these for free, please stay, stay till the end of the video to find out how you can get free tickets. And let's get going. It's been a while since I made a video dedicated to, to the topic of how vaccination might be influencing menstruation. And a big study came out. By big, I mean it included very large number of, uh, of respondents and almost 40,000 people and the reason why I say people is because um, of the 40,000 what was unusual about this particular publication is that of the 40,000 people approximately 90 91 percent identified as women and then nine percent identified as gender diverse which is definitely remarkable concept of the study because that's not common in order to include that kind of diversity in a, in a studies and I'll be talking about that in a moment as well but basically the take home message that based on this survey 42% of respondents mentioned that they had changed to their menstruation and basically reported more heavy bleeding now what does that mean the, the authors of this paper specifically mentioned that the concept of more heavy bleeding is not necessarily defined by any specific amount of blood it has to be based on the individual's living experience because it could be one big change for someone might not be a big change for someone else that type of thing right but if it actually influences the the quality of life of, of that person then clearly you're observing a significant change and approximately 44 percent of respondents mentioned that they didn't observe any difference now in terms of why i particularly enjoy this study is because of this defined as gender diverse individuals because Another element of the study that, that the authors looked at is non-menstruating people and that was defined by three categories. So there were those who were on long-term contraceptives, there were women who were postmenopausal, and then there were those who were on gender-affirming hormones. So and what were the observations with regards to these groups of, of people? And those who were on long-term contraceptives, approximately over 70% reported more heavy bleeding after vaccination. When it came to women post-menstruation, approximately 66%, I believe, reported bleeding after vaccination. And then when it came to those who were taking the hormones, even in that group, about 39% still mentioned reporting bleeding, more heavy bleeding as well. So the reason why I particularly like this definition is because I still think that as a population we are still divorced from the concept that we have more than two types of biological genders. Now I'm going to tell you what I define myself as biological gender. This might not be the exact academic definition because I never really looked at these definitions. But for me, biological gender is defined by the genetic makeup of the person and on top of that also how those genes are utilized. So you can have a male biological gender based on genetic makeup and then you have also female biological gender based on the genetic makeup of that individual. But to me, based on my understanding of genetics and DNA, I also identify with another group of people and that's basically everyone who is in 
in between. And I particularly like the term used by the authors, which is, which was gender diverse. The other term that I really enjoyed hearing before was the term intersex. Now, again, I don't know whether there are specific academic definitions that differentiate those terms. I personally just like them in order to introduce the concept that there are still biological gender possibilities that are different from just the being male or female. There can be many different ways, other ways of how gender can be assigned to an individual and most common additional aspect that not, does not define that individual as strictly male or strictly female is having a combination of both. It's very, very common. You can have very common as in there's many different ways to, to get this additional diversity. So hence, like for example, you could have extra chromosomes, you could have extra genetic material. The genetic material might not be properly interpreted or you can literally have a genetic combination of both where you can have an individual where part of their body is genetically female from genetic point of view and then part of the body could be genetically male and these different tissues whether they are genetically male or tissues that are genetically female they will behave and act on their own accord based on the genetics producing a diverse outcomes of possibilities this type of situation that i'm describing right now is referred to as mosaicism and these are all real all real possibilities we just simply typically are not aware so we don't almost as if we don't acknowledge their existence usually typically forces these people who do not fall strictly into one category or another to or another they have to define one for themselves but usually are oftentimes are not free to go beyond the boundaries that we as a society normally perceive which is to be either male or female so personally i really enjoy that science is now opening up to this territory of investigation that includes gender that are beyond just strictly biologically genetic male or biologically genetic female because we do have genetic possibilities of greater diversity than that all right so <laughs> having said that the authors also mentioned that because this is a survey does not necessarily extrapolate to the population our population as a whole so then we need to be mindful of that but they did mention that this particular study had a, an unusual accidental uh, ability to, sh to display in the open that vaccines can affect menstruation, which historically is never really studied under when vaccines are being studied clinically. It's just it's completely ignored typically. And as a consequence, we're not really aware what might be happening. And in this case, because so many individuals were vaccinated so rapidly, it allowed to discover this much underappreciated potential side effect of vaccination on menstrual cycle. And the authors went further proposing as to what could be the me disrupted mechanisms that, that lead to these changes. And in the original video that I was discussing menstruation, we talked about the brain ovarian hormonal axis. And what's interesting is that the authors of this particular publication claimed, no, we don't think this is it. I think there's something else at play. And what they thought is that the pathways that are being disrupted in this particular case when you vaccinate is the coagulation pathways of the endometrium so that as a consequence of these pathways being disrupted the menstruation does not cease as rapidly so that's what they believe is actually affected and some of the information that the the authors bring up as to why they don't think it's the ovarian hormonal pathways being affected is because they bring up few examples. Number one, those with, they did not see 
any specific differences for those who were on long-term contraceptives which is taking external hormones and uh, or how the postmenopausal women uh, were affected despite the fact that you obviously expect ovaries in such women to be dormant and then finally they also mentioned that the fact that women who were diagnosed with reproductive conditions also were reported we were reporting more heavy bleeding and that actually was one of the predisposing factors as to why the menstruation might have been affected so now let's mention that some of the predisposing factors the biggest one was age then vaccine systemic vaccine effects is how the authors define that information basically what that means if, is if you had the basic vac post vaccination side effects such as fever or fatigue if you did experience that post vaccination you were also more likely to have your menstruation affected mm, even ethnicities uh, was influencing factor whether a woman had a prior history of giving birth or not and I already mentioned the history of diagnosis of reproductive conditions were also predisposing factors so I'm glad we are finally having bigger studies dedicated to this topic where more individuals are being investigated and the authors do point out that this is important that we study this more frequently because it's important all right if you're with me i wanted to let you know we have another COVID q a coming up so if you want free tickets to that the first 10 people who subscribe to the newsletter will send you free tickets if you have previously subscribed never managed to get a ticket let us know we'll see how many we have and and we'll go from there those events basically we answer questions from the audience that we collect from the online audience and then it's open mic and and it's just a lot of fun i have another event coming up with a couple experts one of them is a financial expert the other one is mental health expert and the three of us teach about program for business owners that could be provided to their employees where we talk, talk about how an individual can proactively take care of their well-being collective well-being from a variety of these different angles so that we can improve our quality of life to the best degree possible so uh, if you're interested in that the information for all of this is provided in a description and the, this particular event is free to business owners all right so thanks everyone for uh, for supporting the channel uh, please subscribe if you haven't already please give us a like share the video those are always the big ones and thanks for the super thanks we are looking forward to making more content for you in the future bye everyone